phase two of the EWT project simulation is on particles. Now the most recognizable particles are the ones, of course, that form atoms, right? We know these as the electron, the proton, and the neutron. Now there's a lesser known particle, which is the smallest of them all, which is the neutrino. And just since we started this video, literally trillions of neutrinos have passed through your body. They're that small and hardly collide and are uh, virtually undetectable. There's a lot more than that, dozens and dozens of particles. In fact, what you see on the right here is just some of those, and these are what's referred to as the elementary particles in the standard model. Now, most of these are found when you have two or more particles that collide in collision experiments, and then they're detected. What are they? What are pro uh, particles? And Well, that's exactly what the EWT project is attempting to answer. Some really curious questions about particles, such as how can they be both a particle and a wave? This is what's known as particle wave duality. But this, in fact, is the kind of clue uh, for the next few questions. So what are those other questions? Why do particles decay? Right? You take a larger particle, more, something more massive with more energy, and it might decay to two or more particles. And in an opposite process, how can a small particle like a neutrino oscillate? That means it grows with more energy, becomes larger. And that example is a neutrino uh, oscillating to become larger, to become its cousin, the, either the muon neutrino or the tau neutrino. And these are all very strange things, and, and they need to be explained. And that is the EWT project. Right? It's the uh, objective is to simulate the creation of particles, atoms, and matter with classical physics. And now we're on to phase two of this project where the objectives are to form particles and they should match the expected energy values of experiments and two of the most noteworthy particles for this phase, which is really standalone particles because composite particles like the proton will come in the next phase. Um, for this phase, the two most important ones are the electron and the positron. Now this is phase two, so you might have a question, or what happened with phase one? I'm going to give an update on phase one and its winner uh, a little bit later in this video. Uh, but first, let's talk about phase two and the simulation. I'll begin uh, the requirements for phase two and their explanation by using the quantum microscope add-on for Blender. Uh, this is an option for the development for EWT project. Uh, it's worth a reminder, this is uh, actually incomplete, but it's good for demonstrations. The add-on, once you have it installed, you'll see Qscope on your right-hand side here. Click on it and you have a number of different options. Today we're going over particles. All right, but that is a refresher. What I have set up here is eight different neutrinos because we're going to answer the question, how can a neutrino grow larger in size? Well, one possibility is that it can collide with other uh, particles to create larger ones. Now with energy, they're forced together at the core. It's worth noting, you can see the strength of that energy is here, and it's applied and forces them together towards a core. Um, it's actually very similar to how protons um, uh, form at the nucleus of an atom, right? But instead of atom formation, this is particle formation. Very, very similar, nature repeating itself. Now when that happens, a new particle is, is formed. Hard to see and understand that right now, so let's go over this in detail. First, um, let me hit pause there, and let's turn on the standing wave spheres. So it is formed of waves that are uh, coming in, reflecting off these, and coming back out, and it forms a standing wave. Now, that's spherical. I'm just highlighting this now so you can see it, and you can actually see it in multiple different directions, but I'm going to click on this view so that you can see the different wavelengths. It's probably easier to see it in two dimensions where each of those are a wavelength of standing waves, and notice it decreases until basically its boundary, and there's an option here to turn on a particle shell so we can envision what everything would look like as standing waves inside a shell. And outside of that, everything is traveling waves and uh, has the ability to uh, force another particle away or attract it, and those are, are electric waves. But everything inside is standing waves. And so that answers hopefully two of the questions in EWT, which is how can neutrinos oscillate? And also why are particles, uh, or why do they have particle wave duality? Well, they actually are formed of waves, but yet here in the very middle you've got um, you know, particles, uh, because it's actually a formation of multiple different particles. Now I mentioned the neutrino can oscillate to a tau neutrino or a muon neutrino. In this case, um, that's roughly the energy calculation for a muon neutrino. 
Okay, now what I've set up is particles with 10 different neutrinos here. I'm going to hit play, and we can see the formation of a slightly larger particle now. This one has 10 standing wave uh, spheres, and like before, I can zoom out and see also the wavelengths. Probably easier to see it this way. But notice at the core, see what has formed here, which is a tetrahedron. And if you follow one of these, it's hard to kind of watch, but if you follow one of these, it takes two rotations until uh, it's back in its original position. And that's actually one of the properties of the electron known as half spin. It takes two rotations to return to normal. So speaking of the electron, let's bring up those calculations because this uses the EWT calculations as it's creating it. And um, it has calculated for 10 uh, wavelengths uh, the electron's energy and the radius here. Now, let's compare this to a video that was taken of the electron. This was done at Lund University, and it's a video, but I've taken a screenshot. Let's uh, try to match this up a little bit more. Hard to get it to match up exactly, right, because it is a still shot from an image, but what you can see most certainly is a pattern here of decreasing wavelength as it goes from the core. Maybe I should turn this off so you can see that a little bit better in the original image from Lund University. So you can actually see that pattern until it reaches the edge and let's put that particle shell back in place which represents where that last uh, standing wave boundary is so that everything inside of this is stored energy of the electron. Pretty, pretty neat. For example we'll do, I've set this now for 25 and Let's see a combination of 25 of these particles. Uh, we'll see that uh, it tries to form a core, but it's just not stable, right? So eventually this is going to uh, decay if we let this run long enough. But yeah, you can see that kind of jiggling around there in the middle. Now, you can also do the same thing if we were to set this to, let's go back to that number 10 we had before, but increase this strength. And you'll see a very similar thing even for uh, stable particles if you have too much energy. So really the, the balance of energy is, is very, very important. You can see that instability there at the core. And so this is probably one of the reasons then for, uh, for decay is, is that it has to be able to have that formation at the core and, and only at certain geometric arrangements. All right, that's it. That uh, gives you an overview of phase two and some of the requirements. And so now let's go back to phase one. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Christy Pond from Romania uh, for winning the phase one prize of $2,500 uh, USD. On the right, you can see his computer simulation. Uh, phase one was really about space time and modeling ether and uh, spherical waves, which he has done. It's written in C++ and it's open source. It um, can be downloaded in that URL that you see below from GitHub. Now, based on uh, feedback from phase one. As I mentioned, uh, when we kick this project off, it's a learning process. So based on some developer feedback, um, changes are being applied to phase two and beyond. Some of that feedback was that the requirements were uh, quite strict. Uh, also, uh, it's a very short time frame to complete it. Each phase originally was only two months. So that's the original plan here that I'm showing you. So now I want to show you some of the changes based on that feedback. Phase one, or space time, is already finished, so we're now into phase two, which is particles. So the changes are marked in red. So instead of having finite dates, um, instead it'll be until completed. Now, what does that mean? Um, because one of the uh, feedback was that you know it's hard to get to 100% um, requirements because some of these are quite tricky. Uh, so it's been loosened a little bit. As long as it makes 80% of the requirements, and that's at the judge's discretion, and feedback, of course, will be provided to Anyone that doesn't meet that so they know exactly what to change and resubmit. Um, but as long as something meets 80% of the requirements, and the first one to be able to uh, make a submission is the, the winner. Now, of course, since there's no uh, dates and it's only until the first one completes it, then of course runner-up no longer applies. So you see that that has been scratched off. So the key point here is that uh, we'll take care of it until it gets done. And getting done is basically making sure that about four out of uh, every five of the requirements uh, have been met. And hopefully that's going to be enough uh, proof, but it's loosened it up somewhat. That means that all the rules and instructions uh, have been updated as well to reflect this. And so you can see the details about how all this works on the project site.
Now there's still two options for writing the simulator and this gives uh, developers flexibility on how they want to go about doing it. Uh, you can either use the Blender simulation quantum microscope which is uh, similar to one that I just uh, demonstrated earlier um, or you can develop the custom simulator. There are two different project folders in GitHub. Now because the phase one work has already been done by Christy that code is available to, to download especially for developers that want to develop in C++. And that's it for the update for phase two. I look forward to seeing the submissions and hopefully we can answer some of the questions about what are particles. Thank you and have a good day.